The Dark Ages, a time associated with medieval torment, a time of religious persecution, and in general, not the happiest of times to be alive. When we look back we see suffering and an age when people weren't so enlightened. This being said, it's strange that this period gave rise to some of the most joyous songs of our childhood. Nursery Rhymes Welcome to IF, videos on mystery and history. Hit that subscribe button and ring that bell to never miss a video again. Mothers globally sing these little tunes to their infant children. They look lovingly into their child's eyes whilst singing about children tumbling from trees, heads being slashed off in old London and creatures being cooked alive. These happy little ditties don't sound like the type of thing to woo a child to sleep. So why do we sing them? Where did they come from? What are the dark origins of these rhymes? Most of these nursery rhymes date back to the 14th century but didn't really become popular until a book named Tommy Thumb's Songbook was published in the 18th century. A musician made these tunes ever more popular with his simple musical renditions. These simple and easy to sing tunes quickly caught on, the most famous of his works being the old favourite Three Blind Mice. Mother Goose was another book which did its part in popularising nursery rhymes and giving the parent of the time something to read their children at bedtime. These dutiful mothers telling stories of governmental corruptions, religious viciousness, lurid sex, grotesque diseases, murder and killing, spies, deceivers and the lives of the powerful, all wrapped up in a world of fairies, princesses, goblins and fantasy. Let's take a look at the rhyme Bar Bar Black Sheep, a rhyme which you would be hard pressed to find anyone who didn't know at least one verse of this sheep inspired tune. The song is actually about the medieval fleece charge. King Edward I forced this tax upon the poor farmers of the 13th century. This rule meant that every fleece in the country was partly his, with 33% of the cost of a sack of fleece helping fill the royal treasury. The other monies from the fleece were divided into the congregation and the agriculturalists, this leaving next to nothing for the shepherd boy. The black sheep was viewed as a loss this down to the fact that the walls would be unfit to be coloured, so they were less lucrative for the rancher. A song of financial struggles and hardships brought on by a greedy king, just what every baby loves to hear. But that's okay, they still have Rockabye Baby to send them off to sleep. Well, not so fast. Rockabye Baby, or as it is also known, Shakerby Baby, has its roots in the English Revolution. The baby in the song being the child of King James II. This child was said to be fathered by another man and therefore not a legitimate heir to the throne. The rhyme is full of hidden meaning. The wind may be the Protestant powers that blew in from the Netherlands, the illustrious House of Stuart being the support. The earliest versions of the rhyme contained the unfavourable commentary, this may fill in as noticed to the proud and ambitious who climb so high that by large they fall finally. Maybe you knew about these and more fun rhymes can't hide such political intrigue. Well, they don't, they focus more on sex and debauchery. Lucy Lockett is about a fight between two 18th century whores. Here we go round the mulberry brush began at Wakefield Prison in England where female detainees carried out their jailhouse chores around a mulberry tree in the jail's yard. Oranges and lemons tell of a sentenced man en route to his execution. Here comes a chopper to hack off your head, his body to be chopped up and displayed around the popular London holy places of Clemens, St Martins, Old Bailey, Bow, Stepney and Shoreditch. Pop Goes the Weasel is a nonsensical rhyme that, upon investigation, uncovers itself to be in truth about destitution, pawnbroking 
and hitting the Eagle Tavern on London City Road. And they just keep getting darker from here. Mary Mary quite contrary is thought to be written about Bloody Mary, the torment and the murder of the Protestants she is famous for. Mary, a staunch Catholic, and the garden featured in the song being the burial grounds which she filled with those of the Protestant faith. The silver chimes were thumbscrews, while cockle shells are accepted to be an instrument of torture used on the male private parts. One of the better known meanings to a nursery rhyme is that of Ring O Ring O Roses. This song is said to be about the 1665 Great Plague of London. The Rosie being the rotten rash that was created on the skin of bubonic plague sufferers. The stench from these rotting pustules required the hiding of scented flowers to cover the smell, thus a pocket loaded with posies. A tissue, a tissue, we fall down, is obviously the final stages of the disease before the sufferer falls victim to the plague. In today's politically correct world it's amazing these songs are still sung maybe because most do not know the truth behind them. There was a movement in the 40s whom attempted to censor these songs. Max Minkler helped create a list of 100 of the most well known nursery rhymes including Humpty Dumpty and the Three Blind Lice for harboring offensive parts. He broke down the offensive content reporting that he had found 21 instances of death. These included death by execution, hanging, cannibalism, starvation and murder, 12 cases of torment to animals and one case each of consuming human flesh, body snatching and the desire to have one's own limb severed. So next time you are tucking a loved one away for the night, instead of singing them these old favourites, maybe it's time for something new. Send them off with a little Marilyn Manson or maybe some Black Sabbath. Which of these nursery rhymes were you sung as a child? Did you know the meaning behind the rhymes? Let me know if you did in the comments below. If you enjoy what we do here on the channel please hit that subscribe button, like and share. You can find us across social media by searching We Are If. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.